Carvo with a cane. Good morning, good morning, good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Talk About It Tuesday show. Convo with a King. We are back. Another blessed Tuesday morning. We're making it happen. I got the good sister Miriam. Did I say it right? You said it perfect. Manifest. <laughs> Let me see. Let me get a little volume, a little more volume on your mic. We good though. Good morning, everybody. Like I said, I got the good sister Miriam Manifest here this morning, and we are live good sister how you doing this morning i am doing well i'm here hey i'm here and i'm ready i know that's right i know that's right so this lady this lady this woman this good sister is uh an author spiritual guidance counselor consultant or which whichever it is maybe I, i'm saying it wrong but you go no, you go you go get you gonna get it right uh you do you do self-publishing Yes. That's what's up. And I, I wanted to start with that, you know, that those hit those points because all those are some uh pretty precious things going on right now, you know what I'm saying? Uh with spiritual guidance. That's real precious right now, you know what I'm saying? Uh real essential. And being able to self publish, uh, that's helping out a lot of people who have that gift of writing. So we're gonna get to that, but at right now, Tell the people, tell the people a little bit about you. Tell the people a little bit about you. Introduce yourself. I did the best I could. <laughs> you did great. You did great. Okay. My name is Miriam Manifest, a.k.a. Taurus Takeover, a.k.a. the Clarity Queen, okay? <laughs> a.k.a. me so a go-go. Man, I got so many names. I am definitely similar to God with all these names. I feel I you on that. <laughs> I feel you on that. <laughs> but... Uh, yeah, I'm, you know, a lot of people, they'll give me a title, right? And they'll give me, uh, you know, based on what I do. So they may call me a prophet. They may call me a, um, like you say, a consultant or, you know, but to me, I'm just me, you know, I'm yeah. just out here doing uh, my things. And when right. I'm doing me, so many titles can come along with that. You know, I just say that I am, you know, I am mm. who I am, you know what I mean? So, yeah. um, I was uh, with somebody the other day, and somebody called, and they was like, um, what, what you doing? They was asking the guy what he was doing. He was like, oh, I'm with Manifest, you know, the fortune teller. I'm like, the fortune teller. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, ain't, like, I ain't heard that word. I ain't wow, heard that in a while. I know. I was like, oh, my God, am I the fortune teller? <laughs> uh -huh. So people attach names to me, but to me, I'm just me. You know, I'm there for the moment. If, if people need help with writing, coach. I'm there. If they need help with life, help coach, you know, spiritual guidance, I'm there. If they need assistance with business, you know, coaching, I'm there. Um, if my kid need me as a mother, I'm there. When I need me as me, yeah. 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 <laughs> I'm there, you know. So I do a lot of things. I do many, many things, myriad of things. Mm -hmm. But um, to me, I'm just me, you know. But That's powerful, like though. I don't, so I just let them... Whatever, what what you say I am? That you yeah. say I am. Yeah. I ain't what you say I am, but you know. Yeah, <laughs> you I mean, get the I point mean, though. That's powerful. That's powerful. I'm definitely with that too. The I am. That's that's what it is. And uh, like I had dropped the post the other, uh, I think it was yesterday. They said just be you, man. You know this this the time of just being you, getting back to you, and uh, everything that's inside of you gonna come out. And I see you juggling everything. Maybe not even everything yet. You know what I'm saying? But like you said, you're getting all these titles. That's because what you that's what you're giving to them people. You know what I'm saying? And that's all coming from you. So with that being said, I want you to uh, like give us a little bit about like your spiritual path. Uh, you know, like from the beginning, like when did you uh recognize that you had these gifts inside of you and learn to hone them in and begin to use them. If you well, don't mind. that's a great question. That's a great question. I believe that from youth, I think one of my first memories was like when I was six. And I just remember um, just having this own personal relationship with <laughs> somebody that wasn't there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I wasn't talking to my mom. I wasn't talking to my brothers. It was just me in the window mm. talking to somebody. Okay? Right. Right. <laughs> Even if it was the God in me, like, look, yeah. <laughs> we need some help. Okay? Exactly. Um, I was raised Christian. Mm. Uh, so, you know, a lot of that background influence. But my mom always called me a prophetess, like, 
for years. I never embraced that title. I never even really understood why she called me that. I just was like, whatever, whatever. Um, but then when I start, when I moved to Texas and I really start tapping in. So I've always been spiritual. Like I'm a, uh, when I go to sleep, I ask to project. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That's AKA dreaming. You yeah. know, people. Um, I'm really working on these terms we're using, so yeah. uh, that's before I'm an astral projecting. So I've always been a dreamer. I would tell people about my dreams. Sometimes they would come true. Sometimes they wouldn't. Um, but once I start stepping into the spiritual path of actually helping people with it, I was kind of surprised that I could do it. So I called my mom like, wait, mm. <laughs> how can I do this? Yeah. <laughs> what are you not telling me? You know what I mean? Yeah. What <laughs> I'm missing? I missing? What did I miss? <laughs> And she was like, oh, you've been supernatural since you was a baby. I was like, what does that even mean? You know, right. but she okay. was like, you would just say stuff. And my friends would come back and be like, man, what your daughter said came to fruition. It came true. Um, so, although she's, man, I'm 42 now. Although, am I 42? <laughs> I'm about to be 42 this year. Okay. Okay. So, tour, team tours. Okay, in May. May right, tours. Right, I right. got her in Okay, but, uh, so, it's just, I didn't embrace it. Mm. I really didn't even embrace that title until, like, a couple of days ago, honestly. I was mm. updating my bio on Facebook, and then I, I look up words. that I, I don't just like to assign titles to myself or just use word loosely because a lot of us do that, and we don't understand or understand that we're manifesting with our words. Yeah, come on. So, um, I was looking up different words, and Prophet, when I went to Prophet, You know, um, or prophetess since I'm a feminine, you know. Um, but I never really embraced it. It was just like, oh, she called me a prophet. Oh, oh. And then I would go to churches as like youth, from mm-hmm. youth to 18 to 20s. Right. And when the prophets would come to the church, I would be, I'm the type, I'm like, I want to see you. They know what they're talking about. See what it is. Yeah. Right, go right, up right. Here and get see what they talk about. Them folks would skip right over me. I'm telling you, if it was a line, <laughs> they would skip right over me. Yeah. And I used to ask my mama, why does that happen? Right. Like, I don't get why they not. Because right. I'm trying to see if, right. if it's real, if it's true. Tell me right. about me. Tell right. me right. And I used to be like, mama, why are they skipping over me and things like that? And she would just be like, I keep telling you, you're a prophet. Like, she's been telling me that for so long. And I'm telling you, it's probably been about three days. So I just really embraced mm. it. Um, and they're like, wow. That's <laughs> maybe I am. <laughs> that's something serious. That's how it go. That's, that's something serious. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that's, that's been a long journey. But. One thing about it, once you embrace it and you realize that you're helping people in the process, that's when it becomes really uh, rewarding mm. uh, emotionally, you know, and even financially uh, for me. So it's great to be able to get paid to do what I do naturally, right? right but also right. what I love to do. Using those gifts, that's what it is right now, you know what I'm saying? It's the, it's the time to use those gifts to bring in that income, you know what I'm saying, no financial, you know, that's just what it is, I mean, it can't be stopped, but, uh, so you were saying, like, like, 18-ish, uh, was, you know what I mean, you were still a teenager, once you really started to feel that power and, and begin to use it amongst your, your friends, or you were saying your mama friends? Well, as a kid, way before teenager, I guess when I was young, because I don't remember, Yo. she was telling me, so as a kid, yeah. like, Something six, seven, eight. Yeah. I guess I was already just doing it. Um, but as once I get into the teens, I would um, tell them about the dream. I would tell my friends, you know mm-hmm. what I mean, about the dreams that I would have. And some right. of them would come back and be like, oh, my God, yeah. that happened or, you know, things like that. What I tell people now when it comes to astral projecting, I like to call it astral projecting. Yeah. Um, right. <laughs> that's what I like to call it. Okay. Let's go roll with it. I feel uh, but now what I do, because I, I used to be so frustrated with the dreams, because I would dream all night, I would wake up tired, didn't know what to do with the dreams, mm-hmm. but now I'm still learning, but now what I do, whenever I dream about a person, I just go ahead and reach out to them, text them, call them, right. or whatever. Right. I don't really know right. what, where it is going. Right. It's not always a, a caution or anything like that. Sometimes right. it's just a conversation that needs to be had. Sometimes the people energy yeah. is reaching out to me, and they don't even realize it. And when I call, it's always right on time, because another yeah. title they give me is that I'm an encourager and an right. inspirer. Right. Yeah. 
Yeah, so. most definitely. Most definitely. I understand. I know what you're talking about. Cause it's, it, and it'd be crazy because sometimes it's people you haven't seen in a while. It just pop up in your, you know what I'm saying? Pop up in your dream and be like, man, I, yeah, let me, let me just shoot this energy out that way. You know what I'm saying? Like you say, make a contact or something like that. That's fine. Uh, so, looking out the window, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Talking to somebody, somebody talking to you. That little voice. You want to talk about that little voice that within, like going within, because that was within it. I understand what you're saying because, you know, at, at, at a young age, pretty much same situation and understand, not understanding, not fully understanding what that voice within was or where those conversations was coming from. Where, you know, what was I, what was I communicating with? What actually was it? You know what I mean? Because, uh, you know, sometimes it even seems like you have to think back and be like, well, was I dreaming that? Was I dreaming that too? But uh, explain to us a little bit what, you know, what that little voice is and going within. Well, that little voice, it's, it's, it's also called your intuition. It's also called your good. It's also yeah. called your first mind. Yeah. And I have noticed when I pay attention to that and act on those, I'd be so glad I did, okay? I like to call that voice the God in me, mm. okay? Mm -hmm. The God in me. It's, it's intuition. So many people have it, and I tell people, if you really start tapping into it, just really following the hunches you get, yeah. okay? So, um, because a lot of people, they be so far out in the future or so back in the past that they don't really be in the present. Yeah. And sometimes, you know, like, say if I go into meditation, or if I'm just trying to figure out what to do in this moment, I'm going to say, what is the divine, right? I like to call it the divine mm -hmm. God source, right? right. Angel, that. ancestors, yeah. baby. I would call on the power of all. Right. You know what I mean? All that. I limit myself. If they all hit exactly. us. Exactly, exactly. But I would say, what is the divine? What is this oneness calling me to do today, right? Mm -hmm. Or in this moment? And I'll get a hunch. Sometimes a hunch would be so simple. It might be like, go in there and cook this. It might say, go in there. I say it, but you know what I'm saying? The God in me. Let's yeah. just go with that. It may say call call King, you know what I mean? Text King. It, so it's a, a, a really like just flowing with what you hear, intuitive hunches on a day-to-day -day basis, right? Moment by moment. Instead of being so focused on tomorrow, I'm just I just be in the moment. So yeah. that intuitive voice, I always tell people, listen to that. It's your first mind. It's it's there to help you, right? So I call it it's, it got a bunch of names, but I call it the God in me, you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. <laughs> It's, a, it's something there um, that nobody can heal but me. You know, well, right. I don't know. Everybody got these abilities and powers now. So I probably can't hear what's going on in my brain. But you get the point. Yeah, <laughs> I, I hear you. it. Yeah. Um, but I tell you, whenever I follow through on it, I be, I, I, I'm, I'm never like, oh, I, I shouldn't have listened. Mm. You know, but those, those times where I be like, what? Hold up. <laughs> With it, <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah, you'd be like, wait, hold on, yeah. <laughs> Run that by me again. <laughs> you okay, know but sometimes God may tell you to do something that just seems weird, right? Out of this element, and I'm gonna just give a simple example. So, say it's hot outside, 90 degrees, 100 degrees, Texas yeah. weather, right? And I'm spending my maybe like, before I get ready to leave, grab your sweater. Yeah. Sweater. <laughs> yeah. Hold up. Now, the old me <coughs> probably be like, man, it's too hot to wear this. Right. You know what I'm saying? The old me, when I wasn't trusting myself. Mm -hmm. The new me, I'm be like, all right, let's roll yeah. with it. And wherever I get to where I'm going, it's probably freezing cold in there. Yeah. Probably made a stop, a grocery store, you know, it'd be cold in the food right, section. Right, right, right. You just never know, but spirit kind of knows. But I've been noticing what, what's happening with me more. The more I pay attention on a daily momentous basis mm -hmm. my life is just transformed so much better because see some people like to just pray on Sunday right some people just like to pray when they wake up right some people just like to pray when they go to sleep right me I done kind of evolved from praying because see to me praying is when you are asking and venting yes. to God right Come or on. to yourself yeah um, teach I've evolved beyond that right I feel like when you being grateful thank you thank you thank you great gratitude then that's that's your praise and worship yeah. But then when you meditate, when you just shut up, sit down, be silent, no distractions, no music, um, no no nothing, you know, just you and yourself and you ask yourself a question, like for me, what is the divine calling me to do today? 
I'm going to sit in silence and just wait on the answer and see what comes to me. Sometimes I don't even ask the question. I just, right. yeah. just go and meditate. Just you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Get that calmness, you know, breathe in you. through my nose, mm. breathe out through my mouth. Um, that's a great relaxation technique that I um, that I suggest everybody do just to kind of help calm you down, calm you down so your brain and all your thoughts can kind of just simmer down. Because when you, most people got a lot going on, especially in their head. Oh, yeah. So all these thoughts be coming. So breathing in your nose and out through your mouth, that really helps, um, you know, just calm those thoughts down. So for me, um, I really be in a, a mode of gratefulness and meditation. Yeah. Like that's that's where I like to be. Sometimes I gotta kick me out of meditation because I be in there too long. So like, all right, go do something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, I done gave you what you need. <laughs> right, cause see what it is. A lot of people pray, but then they don't do. They be like, well, God, give me a sign what I do. And God be done gave about 30 signs. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Wherever they at. You see yeah. a billboard. You see a TV post. You will hear a song. Somebody right. tell you. And they be like, oh, well. <laughs> and yeah. God like, what the action is? So what happens is, once you keep trying to tell a person something, and they not going to listen to obedience, it's just, I feel like God is so similar to us, right? Mm-hmm. If you if a person ain't gonna keep listening, you gonna quit talking. Yeah, you gonna quit. They gonna quit talking to you. You ain't listening. Real but talk. spirit know, just like my mama said, when spirit know that you obedient, I like to call it spirit too. You know, right? Um, oh yeah. But when spirit know you obedient, so say if spirit. Let's use not you for an example. Let's use somebody. Say spirit told somebody else, "Hey, I need you to go help such and such out. Call such and such." And that person don't listen to their intuition and they don't call. Well, spirit will like you know what? I'm gonna call manifest. Because I know she going to be obedient. I know yeah. she going to do what I told her to right. do. Now, I might forget in that moment, but that's why it's about being in the moment. Sometimes you got to do it. Text it right then as soon as they pop on your mind. Right. Let, me Let me call them right now real quick. Um, Just do your part. Because one thing about it, <laughs> Spirit going to get the job done. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. But, uh, It's just about that obedience, though. That's what's it's up. That yes. Uh, so, uh, that was perfect because... uh. Meditation was one of the things that I wanted to go into next because I, I remember when we emailed another day and he was like, well, you know, when we got ready to uh, book the show and he was like, yeah, let me meditate on what I want to say or what, you know, has going to ride and I was in the same situation. So meditation, you know, you just explain, you know, what it do and, and how important it is. And like you said, well, so when we, when we meditate, this is for the people because a lot of people, like you say, don't meditate and now that it is being talked about a lot more and a lot of more people are meditating to calm down a lot of people want to get into it you know so what would you recommend uh somebody like give them a setting uh you know like you told them be still being still but uh what kind of setting and how would you tell one to really prepare themselves because some people can begin to manifest you know i mean not manifest <laughs> that's we're gonna have to get there too but begin <laughs> to meditate and want to meditate but feel like well i'm doing it wrong it, it, it ain't working for me you know what i'm saying but <laughs> you know what i'm talking about so what kind of advice would you give somebody who want to start meditating well i would tell them that meditation can be done anywhere at any time if you on your job <laughs> and you just need a breather. Yeah. Meditation is re- okay. So there's two form. There's many forms of meditation, but there's True. two that I always suggest for um, beginners or just you know people who like. Have I been doing it wrong? <laughs> right. The main part. Okay, so there's. Let me start with the elements. I mentioned it before, but I'm gonna restate it again. The main part is silence. Okay, so this is no music, no TV, no screaming and yelling. Children, you know what I'm saying? I feel like. Meditation should be taught at home. Mm-hmm. Meditation should be taught at school. Right. It's not really a teaching. Well, you got to teach them what to do, but I feel like it should be a practice. Not a teaching, right. but a yeah. practice. Good, good, yeah. right? right. Um, not a punishment when we go in the corner. This is a <laughs> this is a True. upliftment to go yeah. within, right? right? To calm yourself down right. or to uh, get insight. Yes. So I would just say you could be wherever. You could be in the car. You could yeah. be at home. You can be in your bed, but well, don't be careful about the bed. You need to be sitting up if you're in the bed, because if you laying down, it's going to become a sleep potato. Yeah, you know yeah, you're going to be okay. out of bed. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. when you know you did it right. right. Yeah, for real. Because I done found myself back here in this chair meditating and wake up an hour later. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So, it's best to sit up, you know, sit up straight. Yeah. Um, 
it starts with the breathing. So the first part of meditation is because a lot of people like they don't know what to do with their thoughts. Right. Um, a lot of people are not used to hearing their own thoughts because they right. so drowned out with social media, the news, other people's thoughts, Man, that's heavy um, too. music. Yeah. So that's heavy. some people not comfortable in their own thoughts because of various reasons. Mm. But the first step will be to breathe. So instead of trying to think. You just focus on the breathing, which would be the breathing in through your nose. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it right now so they can see. But <laughs> breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth, and you would just do that continuously um, until you feel relaxed, right? And then as you do it, once you get the breathing down, then you kind of relax. I always tell people relax the stomach area. You don't realize yeah. how much tension right. you're holding in your stomach area. And then it's like, oh, shoot, yeah, let me relax that area. You know what I'm saying? Oh, then you man. relax all areas, relax my arms. You know what I'm saying? Relax yeah. my neck. Like, you kind of start relaxing your whole, body, your whole body. When you do it right, you really go limp. Right, right. right. <laughs> but basically, I'm going to just, <laughs> I'm <gonna> just uh, <laughs> show yeah. people. But basically, I'm going to do it. I just, so most people think it's something serious and right. uh, something hard to do it's not you are just really breathing yeah, <laughs> and a lot it. of times we so busy with life that we're not even breathing for real for it's real. like we're not even breathing right. so that was just like showing y'all the breaths it's simple um but then i take it to a new level and i will rest all my chakra areas mm -hmm. so chakra is like seven points of the body but I will go through starting from the root chakra all the way up and I will relax each section. And it's, I'm telling you, you will literally feel your whole body like, oh, sure. yeah, <laughs> yeah, I needed it. Yeah, um, so that's one way of meditation. You could do that. Remember, you could do that at work. It don't. A lot of people think it's, it takes a long time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Set your timer for one minute and do it. You deserve it. <laughs> you right. deserve it right. until they start it right. Or in the middle of the day when you like, whoo. You know, even if things are good, it ain't got to be woo. It could just be like, you know what? That's great. I was productive. What's next? Let me meditate real quick. Right. You know, see what's next. Sometimes you may hear you need to rest. You know, right. sometimes yeah. you may hear, okay, it's time to get active. Um, so I like the breathing meditations, but then I like the other ones where you ask a question. Okay, and then you breathe and meditate and wait on the answer. Yeah. So this ain't a whole long list of your your Christmas list of God do this for me. Remember, right. praying is asking and venting we're not doing that in meditation we're right. not doing that so you ask vibe. right <laughs> come on now god you know people people god is so similar to us and god desires a relationship with us and it's like any relationship when you have a relationship you like that person to talk to you call you let them know you appreciate you and they let you know you appreciate them. If you just go into a person and you like, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, hey, God, check this out. This going on, this going on. Like, spirit, like, That's real. Well, look, I'm finna yeah. go talk to Manifest. Like, Cause Manifest is yeah. crazy. Manifest just asking me one question. What <laughs> is the buyer calling me to do today? I give her that. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? So, yeah. um, we gotta evolve beyond, don't get me wrong, there is some things, you know, like, when people say, well, pray for me, I need uh, help with whatever, finances, health, whatever. But what we have to understand or understand, what we have to understand is that we have the power to speak, yes. right? Yes. We can speak it, right? Yes. So um, we, we got to use the power that's in us. We got to use our God power that's in there, us. And whenever we're trying to look for God um, outside of ourselves, it's, it's an issue. You know, it's an issue. Don't get me wrong. I, I understand. I understand. I understand that I'm a goddess, right? Mm -hmm. But I know good and well I ain't create all these planets. If I did, I don't remember. But right. you know what I mean? So I ain't saying I'm God of God. I'm just understanding that there's a goddess power in me. And in that, we can speak things into existence. Right. In that, we can, we'll have to pray for everything. We can manifest it. We can speak mm -hmm. it and desire it. And bring it, bring it forth. Mm-hmm. Right. Right, right, right. And yeah, like you were saying, you know, not when we say these things, it's not that we're saying, yeah, I'm the God. I'm the, no, I'm the God. I'm God because I am, because I'm part of that. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of people don't understand that. And it's real important. I think it's real important these days for people to understand and to be able to discern the difference of what we're saying. You know what I mean? Like, the t you know, like I am is such a powerful statement. You know what I mean? And when, uh, you're meditating, 
calming down, you taking care of that I am so you can keep a great connection with the all. You know what I'm saying? Right. right? Yeah. And I appreciate you for the demonstration, you know what I'm saying? Because, like I said, I know it's a lot of people who don't understand it. Just like you have to say, well, I don't know how to pray. You know what I'm saying? So uh, we so appreciate you for that. Uh, spiritual life journeys. Spiritual life journeys. And you gave us a little bit about your spiritual path. Uh, talk to the people about, you know, these days and this time frame that we in, what most of us need to be doing, you know, with their spiritual and you know, and life journey at this time right now. Like what 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 would you be what would you tell somebody if I called and I'm like, yeah, man, Miss Manifest, I just need I don't know which way I'm going. I don't know what to look. I don't know if I'm up, I don't know if I'm down. What kind of advice would you what, what what's the consult that you gonna give a brother like me? I actually, somebody called me last night. <laughs> somebody, I actually got a call like that last night. Wow. And, you know, what I told him is the same thing I would tell you and anybody else. We're looking for the answers outside of ourselves, okay? And that's the issue, all right? We have to go within. within. And when I say go within, it's about asking yourself what you're supposed to be doing and then follow through on that. Because when we asking this person their advice, what I should do, or we seeing what the world think we should do, then you 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 really turning away from who we really are. Yeah. Another thing I had to learn was that yeah. we create our own reality. So it's when you evolve, there's no more blaming this person, that person. Yeah, that stuff probably did happen. Yeah, that person probably was. You know what I mean? Everything you said they was. Right. But what's your responsibility? Right. What you no? Know, it's about taking responsibility and saying, you know what? I created that. Yeah. <laughs> Let me create better, yeah. <laughs> right? So um, it's about knowing what it is we desire. And I think that's the issue because most times if I be like, what, 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 what you like? What you like to do? Or what do you love? And they be like, well, I know I don't like this. I don't like that. I don't like that. And I'm like, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Yeah, first of all, you didn't answer the question. Right. Second of all, when you say don't, 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 you putting that in your vibration like you really be manifesting that so i always yeah. tell people whether it's a relationship a job a house or your spiritual life you have to focus on how you would like it to be like your focus right whatever you focusing on that's that's where your attention is so i tell people figure out what it is you truly desire and a lot of people of course they be like well i would like to be a millionaire and i'd be like great how <laughs> right, you gonna get there yeah. <laughs> like what do, what do you like to do what's your skills What's your talents? Because see, what's happening is, or what has happened, and that's why we have to change. Um, I like um, my boy Tony Johnson, Tony Saray. He'd be like, we got to change the narrative. I love exactly. that because yeah. he's correct. Because a lot of times we, we put the kids in school. We was put in school. And then we they have us learning things that are not our skill talents, that are not really what we're supposed to be doing with our life, that not really drives our spirit. Right. So now we have all this knowledge. But what are we doing with it? And we still don't feel fulfilled, right? right. Um, so it's like, I learned about the natal chart, right? So the natal okay. chart is basically, you put your birth time in there, mm. your date, where you was born. So I always thought that I was just a Taurus, right? right? Just a Taurus. I'm just a Taurus. Team Taurus. Taurus. <laughs> and I am. You know what I mean? And I am. I feel you. But then once I put it in the natal chart, I realized, hold on, I'm not just a Taurus. Right. I'm a whole Pisces moon out here. I got a Gemini mm -hmm. Venus out here. Mm -hmm. And it's like these things help create us. It kind of like molds what you're supposed to be doing. So when I learned um, that I'm really supposed to be speaking for real, I'm supposed to be writing, written, spoken words, mm -hmm. I'm supposed to be communicating. These are my skills. These are my gifts. Naturally, right. talents. Um. So anytime I try to do anything outside of that, it's, it's like, <laughs> you know, work. I've worked on other people's jobs before, yeah. but that's not my calling. You know right. what I mean? It don't, it don't feel <laughs> right. So it's like whenever you try to do things that's not your calling, people are like, what's going on with my life? And that's because people are taking so long to walk in their calling. Mm. So I feel like natal charts, N-A-T-A-L, natal charts should be done at birth. Like, as mm. soon as you find out what time it is, you need to be putting that in your yeah. child um, thing, finding out what their gifts are, 
um, that way you can mold them, push them in that direction, right? And, right. and just um, do that. That way you, you, what my thing is, teaching these kids and ourselves that we can get paid off doing things we love to do. We can. Right. And talk we can't, but we yeah. can't. Right. There's a lot of people who work on jobs, but they love their job. They good at it. You know what I mean? Um, but there's a lot of people who are on their jobs and they just there for the money. Right. I'm manifesting to where myself, but the world, we're getting together where we're going to love what we're doing and we're going to be getting the money too. You All know right. what I mean? All <laughs> right. <laughs> So I end up getting my daughter natal chart done, not when she was born, because I wasn't all evolved. Right. But um, probably a couple of years ago, because I was just, she's a Taurus like me, but she was just so different and going through all these changes, and I'm like, I got to figure out what's going on with my child. Oh, so um, <laughs> so I got her natal chart done, and then it just opened my eyes to like who she was and Man. how she is. So like, she's not me. She's That's different powerful. from me. Yeah. You know, like where I may be a homebody. Because she has that earth, um, she well, earth element because she's a Taurus, but she also has air element, which is Aquarius. Right. So you know the air elements, they like to be out, free. Right. They ain't trying to be at home like that, you know. What I mean? <laughs> so right, I have right. to. I don't know what I may would like to stay in. I have to make sure she's still getting out and things like that. So I just feel like when you learn about yourself, it's powerful, it's powerful, yeah, right? right? When you can learn about your kid and help mold them in the direction, and, and you know it'll stop any type of conflicts because you understand each other. Mm -hmm. um, so I feel like that's a big part of uh, just changing the way we parent, changing the way we teach yes. um, our kids. But remember, a lot of this stuff should start at home. We be yes. expecting teachers to do it. And them nah. teachers don't even like their job for real. They don't even right. love what they're doing. So it's like, right. <laughs> I'm not trying to have nobody who don't know their job teach my child. You I know what I mean? I feel you on that. Man. It's, tough looking. it's tough looking at it. You know what I mean? And like you say, especially when you had an opportunity to, to learn who your child is and knowing it, you're not getting what you need to be getting in that school. Right. <laughs> you know, yeah, so that's that's tough, man. But that's that's dope that you did that. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And uh, I can understand what you're saying. Once you understand who each other are, it's a whole total different respect for your child as an individual. Understanding and finding out who she is, man, that's fine. But I'm going to tell you the biggest lesson that's been just so powerful to myself and my daughter. It's great because she's a teenager and we, we get to learn together. Mm -hmm. um, but we learn. So I have this, it ain't my thing, but we, we call it the mirror effect. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's the mirror effect where everybody you meet is a mirror of yourself. Mm -hmm. I learned it a long time ago. And I started noticing, because, you know, you meet these people and you be like, that's my mirror. I know I act like that. I know I act like that. And spirit will show you, yes, you do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it'll be in other areas. You know right. what I mean? So it's like you got to check yourself. But the more I keep evolving into the mirror effect, I'm realizing, especially when it comes to the natal chart, because the natal chart looks like a circle. And it has all the signs on there. So right. really, we got all, we affected everything. by everything, right? Yeah, everything. So it's all a mirror. So everybody we meet is a mirror. So what's happening now, when I meet the great people, like you or I made great people like um Tony Teray or just great people in general now. I'm like, oh that's my mirror up here. It's dope. It's dope. Yes. Yeah. Okay, I'm it's like, dope. that's my mirror. Now, don't get me wrong, you still run across some mirrors and you be like <laughs> Yeah, like I ain't even trying to make sure I ain't out here. Oh, that that gives you a moment to check yourself. <laughs> right. If you if you see a character in somebody else that uh or characteristic in somebody else and you're not vibing with it or you just like let let's say if they are like, you know what I mean? Or, you know, you got to ask yourself, damn, am I a liar? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> sometimes the answer may be no. That don't mean you always lie, but you got to check right. yourself. You gotta be, yeah, you gotta check lie. the checkpoints. Uh, right, or just, it's like, you know, we got social media out here. If you see somebody posting something and doing something, and you just like, oh, I, I, don't, I don't like the way they said that, operated that. That's your time to tighten your life up. Right. You know what I'm saying? Not to judge them, exactly. but if your mirror, so it's just like a real mirror. You see something you don't like, you know what I'm saying? You're going to yeah. be like, okay, let me, let yeah, me let tighten me that. Let me yeah. go. Oh, there's something on my face. Let me wipe that off. Right. That's what you um, should be um, using people as your other mirror, not to judge them or condemn them. It's just like, you know what? The way they handle that business right there, that one's sexy. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah, so yeah. guess what? I'm going to make sure when I handle my business, it's going to be done properly. So you just, but everybody's our mirror. And when I learned that, it helped me stop being so judgmental. Mm -hmm. it, helped, it helped me just to love people even more because it's like, oh, yeah. they just don't know. They need a little more oh. love. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hello. Oh. You know, yeah. so it, uh, the mirror effect helps. A lot of people don't like to see it because they quit to say, oh, nah, uh -uh, that character is saying me. Mm -hmm, meditate 
that on the spirit to show you exactly yeah. that that's you. Or you could just make sure that you don't become that mirror, you know, right. by just manifesting your life better. I feel doing better manifesting to be better manifest miss manifest healthy eating so you uh changed up your diet not too long ago uh a lot of people doing that you know what i mean uh give us a little bit on that like what's your title what's that title what's that title uh Yes, so I'm team vegan now. A lot of people hear vegan and they don't even really know what it is for real. So vegan is basically you um, you don't eat anything from an animal. Nothing from an animal, right? Mm -hmm. So this is your eggs. This is your bacon. All that good stuff I used to eat. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) Baby, let me tell you. So I I notice a lot of people, they do challenges Mm. on social media. And I'll be like, some of those challenges, I'm like, it's just a waste of energy and time. Like, what are these people doing? But I just gone about my life. I did my mirror. I said, okay. But it was a vegan challenge for two weeks. And I was like, now that's a challenge I can get on. I like okay. challenges that's going to. A real challenge. Help me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Standing yeah. on 10,000 crates. Oh. I don't really know how that's going to help Yeah, no, nah, I ain't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need to I can get up the second one. I ain't even playing. <laughs> so I said, okay, I'm going to try that for two weeks. I was supposed to just be for two weeks. I did it for two weeks, and I noticed the difference. Mm. I used to be so thick. I know I'm looking all, you know, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but I was like really thick, face fat, thick, thick. Like yeah. now I can look at people, and I can tell them they eat meat because of the, just, uh, it, it's a different right. vibe that the people that have meat eat. So, um, but I noticed, like, my feet used to swell. Mm. I used to think it was because I used to stay up all late at night. But yeah. I still stay up all night. My feet don't swell no more. So, mm. I did it for two weeks, and I noticed, okay, like, hey, my feet don't be swelling. Man, my okay. intestines, stuff, stuff digesting better. I was like, hold yeah. on. Yeah. So, about four years ago, I think it's been about four years, I stopped eating, like, the turkey, the chicken, okay. the pork, yeah. the beef. I'm still eating fish though. Okay. So I ain't just jump into the vegan life. Right. I did the two week vegan, but when I came off the um two week thing, I stopped like the the main Cut meat. the meats, yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. But I was still eating my fish, I was still eating my eggs and baby yeah. uh, your girl love cheese. So yeah. I was still eating those things. Um but last year, Mabel May will make a year. Last year is when my daughter like she challenged me to do this and sometimes I'd be like <laughs> God, why? But, because <laughs> your girl miss fish, okay? Yeah, yeah. No. But, so we are vegan now. Um, May will make a year. When I tell you, when I dropped the meats, that did a lot for me. Like, I was just kind of coming off weight, and I wasn't even working out. Mm-hmm. But when I dropped all the um stuff made from an animal, yeah. and in addition to that, because I have to say that, because, you know, they call us vegan and strange. Like, anybody who know us will be around us, we just not going to eat anything. Yeah. Like, we'll lust over and be like, ooh, that look good. We'll watch you eat and be like, hi, hey. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, we'll cause, like yeah. we, we ain't always been vegan. You know what I mean? Yeah, right. I remember. But, <laughs> but we vegan extreme. And what, what does that mean when I say vegan extreme? So we don't eat anything from an animal, but we also don't eat bread. We also really don't eat anything white unless it's like a potato that's grown out the ground. Okay. So anything white. So you're talking about white pasta, right. white rice, white bread. Anything that's... Oh, that's um, yeah, when I now don't get me wrong, I found other alternatives. So like instead of rice, I eat quinoa. Okay. I did find pastas that are made from like chickpea or lentil, you know. Yeah. So they're still alternatives. Right. right. But we read ingredients, and this is where our people got to do better. Okay, you got to read these ingredients because it can say veggie, it can say vegan all day. Yeah. But I need to be able to look at them ingredients and see what's in there. Because if it's anything on there that looks like it should be on the periodic table, if it's anything on there that mm-hmm. I can't read it, or that I don't know exactly what it is, I'm yeah. not going to eat it. Okay, so it right. can say vegan, it can say healthy, it can say all that. Yeah. But I'm telling you, the way me and my daughter operate right now, we won't do it. We don't eat no more white salt unless it's sea salt. So we normally eat pink Himalayan salt okay. um, or, you know, the white sea salt. That makes a big difference. So if people dealing with swelling and things like that, it's the salt you eating. Mm. Um, we shouldn't be eating that. Right. Um, right. I, th- I found it funny because when I buy the pink Himalayan salt, it has a, a, a it has a sticker on there. It always say this does not contain iodine, a nutrient that you need for your body. I'll be like, what the hell? Getting this salt, <laughs> you know. So it's yeah. like, as people, 
we got to start reading and actually we got Google. We got all this stuff at our fingertips, but we're not using it to look up stuff. You know, we'll look up the BS. Right. We're supposed to look up the BS and the drama and the yeah. tea and the lemonade. Yeah. But are you looking up what you're putting in your body? Because we can't even blame the people. I'm going to just say the people or them because they're putting it right on there. And we right. still got it. They dropping it on the table. Like, you, they just... you know, so for me, when I stop eating all that stuff, when I tell you that weight came off, mm. came off, and I don't work out, and I ain't saying that to brag. I'm just telling you facts. I did not work out, and mm. that weight came off, yeah. came off, came off. And I'm like, that's what it's it is. Because yeah. I'm the type of person, once I try something and it works, mm. oh, I'm going to stick with right it. with it, huh? I'm going to stick with it. That's so what's I up. feel better. My food digests better. Uh, we got to drink more water. We got to drink more water. At least three liters for men. Y'all probably need about three and a half, four. But we got to drink more water. That's a big part. People have been telling us that since we've been kids. But I'm telling you, it makes a difference in how our body processes food. Yeah. Especially if you eat eating starches. Like, your body needs to be able to push it out. So a lot of the stuff be um, in our gut. You know, just sitting there. Yeah. Um, because, first of all, we're not eating the right amount of food. So, just imagine your body is used to fresh fruits and vegetables. Here we are coming, putting all that junk in, and it's trying to figure out how to get it through the body. You ain't drinking enough water for it to push through them intestines. And, your, and people be like, ooh, my stomach hurt. Ooh, ooh. Huh. You know what I'm saying? And then they, they say, we got the general, uh, we got um diabetes in our family. We got high blood pressure in our you know family. No, you got the same eating habits in your family. Right, yeah, that's you doing the same thing. thing. Diseases and stuff, that's not hereditary. Your right. habits right. Are, is what is hereditary. Mm. And so we just changing the narrative. I just love that tone, yeah, that yeah, 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 for we, real. we just switching it up. Um, you know, for our family, I don't like to call them her, uh, curses, generational curses, so we call them generational habits. And we just breaking that. We just breaking yeah. that over here. That's what that is, yeah. That's the vibe. That's what we on, you know. Those that are on it, and I, I'm like you. I suggest that everybody get on it, get to breaking them. You know what I'm saying? Break a chain a day, man. You know, try. You know, just keep pushing. So uh, I appreciate you. I appreciate that info. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I still, I still eat meat, and I just, I, I'm tired of it. You know what I'm saying? I just, I, I guess I just ain't got the courage yet to, to, to stop eating. You know what I'm saying? But I, I'm, you know, I, I'm. I'm I'm always trying to improve here and there, so you know maybe one day I get to that point. You know, what I'm it talking is about? a challenge. Yeah, I, yeah, I, mean, I know. It, it. it wasn't the easiest. It was. It's. It was like learning how to cook all over again. Right. I mean, literally, like some days it's like, oh my gosh, what am I doing? <laughs> like I used to know how to cook, and now it's like I gotta relearn how to cook because switching from. Not eating meat, so like, say if I would like to have a meatball or a meatloaf, well, I got to figure out how to do it with vegetables, mm -hmm. right? Right. Which is cool, but you know how some people use uh, white flour to make their stuff, self rising flour and stuff like that. I don't yeah. use that. Like, if I'm using flour, it got to be uh, chickpea flour, spelt flour, something right. from a plant. Mm -hmm. Um, because anything that's bleached, you know what I'm saying? Bleached yeah. flour, anything white, right. you know, I'm just kind of uh. Cautious. I always been like that even before I didn't eat meat, but I'm <laughs> okay. really cautious now because I'm noticing like, hold on, this yeah. stuff. Wait up. So, but it's a challenge. I ain't trying to make it seem like it's the easiest thing to do, but um, for your body though, it's yeah, the best. It's good. Yeah, ain't no good. going back. Ain't no going back. That's what's up. That's what's up. So, uh, honey in the woods. In the woods. Ah, yeah, that's that, in that's the near that's near and dear to your your heart and your soul. Yeah. I see. I that's see my first book, my first baby. You know, anybody that self publishes with me, I always tell them I'm the baby mama. You know what I'm saying? Because when we create a book together, it's like a baby. Oh, you know, right? And uh, because it's the first, you know, and um, that book started. I was in college uh, at the time. Took a creative writing course. Um, I think we was had a creative writing club, okay. you know, and I went there and they was challenging us to do things outside of our, norm, like write things outside of what you normally write. Because I normally write adult stuff, uh, action uh, yeah. stuff, okay. you know, just okay. that kind of stuff. But they would like write something out the norm. So they had like challenged us to do like something fairy tale like. So that's how Honey in the Woods was born. So I just write it for fun. Right. And when I say do do what you like for fun, you just never know how it can work out. Right. And I showed it to a guy who was in uh, college at the time, and I gave him the story. I sent him the story. And when he came back, he had cut up my story. <laughs> he had to cut up my story. I should have I had 
Tyrion Hill, so y'all could have seen it. Cut on my words, honey. I'm like, what? 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 <laughs> but baby, when I opened, he had unfolded in some kind of way. When I opened up, he had pictures to every uh, sentence or whatever I had. And I was like, oh my God. I was like, we got to do something with this. We just can't mm. do nothing. Right. And okay. um, so I'm one of them people, I got a bunch of different projects. I, I write yeah. poetry, right. I write right. music, right. I write um. Uh, script, like working on my first script, so it's okay. um, okay. I'm well rounded, you know what I mean, when right. it comes to writing. But what I tell people when they're trying to figure out what to do first, I always say, ask yourself which is the most complete. All right, so that's what I did. I moved to Texas, and I was like, all right, which is the most complete? And of course, the children's book is small, it's little, it had the pictures and the words, so it's pretty much about you know getting it ready for the public. Right. So I said, well, I'm running with Honey in the Woods then. <laughs> And I published that book, and I'm telling you, with, it, with that book, just open doors for everything. Because I turned that book into a whole business. Oh, you know? really? And okay. So that's going to always be near and dear. I'm working on the second book now. It's Honey in the Woods. So the first one is Honey in the Woods, the coloring story. And the second going to be Honey in the Woods, the story book. So the first one, they can color, uh, read, and uh, okay. introduce the Spanish. The second way, I'm going to still include the element of Spanish, but it'll be like a, something you could read to the kids, like something that could be in the library. The coloring book, can't mm. put that in the library. It's right. coloring. Yeah. So, uh, working on that, but, you know, I wear many hats. I wear many hats. You know, I'm ready to come out with my adult content, but, you know, when you come right. out as a children's book author, you know, it ain't just, you're just book author, yeah, no, baby. You know, right. That's one title, okay? <laughs> yeah, right. I'm more than that, yeah. I'm more than that, yeah. and I write more than that. Right. Okay. So, but yeah, that, that's 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 what's up. So, uh, prior to uh, you taking that class, uh, had you wrote anything before? Uh, were you interested in writing? And like, when mm -hmm. did you when did you begin to work that gift? So, writing is like my spirituality. It's always been there. It's just something I always did. I remember being in third grade, and the, the teacher was like, "Everybody, we're gonna write this." And who? I would write, everybody would write, but I would win. Oh, I would really? win the competition. Of what, I didn't know it was a competition, but you know what I mean? Yeah, right, yeah. I'll <laughs> you know, be, I'll the competition. Do it. So it's something I always did, but like most writers, I would write and just keep it in a journal mm -hmm. and sharing it with nobody and talking it with nobody. You know, you had those one or two people that would read it. My mom has always been my biggest supporter. I'm yeah. grateful for that. So she done read all my stuff, okay? Yeah. Everything. <laughs> okay, but well, yeah. she is my biggest supporter. Um, <laughs> so, you know, I would just let a few people read it. Um, and then I had, you know, I have some poetry. I submit, submitted some poetry that got published in the, um, like a college anthology. So, you know, this lady, um, she was like, you should get, you know, start putting this stuff out. Like, and I, that's what I tell readers now. Like, we have all this stuff and it's just sitting and nobody's reading it. And it's like, you got to put it out there. So I've been a writer a long time, but it wasn't until college that I actually realized that I can do something with it and make a career out of it. Because keep in mind, I was brought up like most of us where we think just just get a job get yeah. that money get your house yeah. take care of your family that's it so i was actually working at the college as a tutor okay i would tutor and note take for people with disabilities um so one lady she called out or couldn't do it and the lady called me and asked me could i fill in and i was already at the college that day so i was like yeah i'll go in so she like it's a um you know, she told me where to go. So when I went in there, it was a creative writing class. And look, I didn't even know they had a creative writing class. Okay. I didn't even know that was available. So I'm in the yeah. class, taking yeah. notes for the student, but I'm like, this is cool. Yeah, this, right. this yeah. is a fun class. This ain't All like right. mother class I'm yeah. taking. It's actually fun. That's dope. So next semester, I signed up for that class. Mm. And this is why nothing is a coincidence. So right. When you, when you where you're supposed to be, it's going right. to make it work for you, you know. So I signed up for that class, and... That's when I realized, you know what, I would like to be a writer. I mean, I am a writer. I already am, but I would like to take it to new levels, you know. Yeah. And little did I know, though, that I was going to be helping other people do it. Like, I was doing it for me, you know. Yeah, right. But now, like, I've, I've helped authors get their books self-published. And that is that is a really great feeling to I see bet. come to fruition, you know, I to bet. help people come true. So, it's very rewarding. I bet. I bet. Right I bet. I bet. Give me, a, uh, give me a roundabout number about how many authors you think you helped. Um, looking at the books here, let's see. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 11. So 
so I got 11 self-published authors, all right? So I, I normally don't post their books or right. share their books in 12 because your boy Tony Teray about to oh, come yeah, out with his exactly. book. Exactly. <laughs> That's fine. That's fine. I'm ready for that. The streets lie to us. Yes, yes, yes. That's the Already. powerful book right there. Already. Um, So that'll be 12 that's self-published. But there are many authors who come to my writer's workshops. There are right. many authors who will have me edit their book or make a cover. Mm. But I always tell them when you actually publish it. That's when I'm a post. So I've helped more than that, I but just it's up to them whether they go through the whole process. Some people pause for whatever reason, life. Some people right. pause for finances. Some people pause for whatever. Right. Um, but self-publishing is the goal, you know. Mm. But at least when they come to the writer's workshop, they know what to expect in the uh, publishing process. They know how to get started. They know how to get unstuck. Like when you come to my workshop. Uh, online or in person, you're gonna um, you're gonna work on your project. You're gonna know. You're gonna leave with a checklist saying, "Okay, I know what I need to do to get this book done." But it's up to you to do it because I can write it for them. Yeah. But I'm not. Right, right, right. <laughs> I got my own stuff going on. Yeah. Like a lot of people come to me about ghostwriting, and I can do that. I can do it. Yeah. But I just feel like. It's your book. You should sign. You know what I'm saying? It's your, it's your work. Yeah. A lot of people, you know, they so they they write us, but they so afraid to let other people read. And I'm like, mm. Mm. hold so it on, the baby. Not trying to be an author, right? Because mm. I say a writer, anybody can be a writer. Okay. But when you actually publish it, then you're an author. You're a published author. Yeah. You know, that's the difference. Yeah. So I help people that's really trying to get self published. Don't get me wrong. I help writers too, but the goal is to be self published because. You can help more people, right? Mm. Or entertain more people, depending on what your book is about, when the, when it's available to the public. If it's not available to the public, then you, then you wrote for you. Don't right. get me wrong. Writing for you can be therapeutic. Yeah, yeah. It can be great. It can be fun. Right. But you can impact more people's lives when you make it available to the public. Right. Because they came at you for some reason. That's for sure. Yep. But uh, for the people, uh, for the people out there on the radio, when uh, who'll be seeing this video. Uh, check that out www.honeyinthewoods.com the children's book uh, and you say they, the kids are able to color in that one mm -hmm. and part two is coming soon coming when soon. it's time coming on when this time, time. Come on, <laughs> time. I would love to speak soon into existence but you know right right right, right. I feel you, right. I feel you. And, you, and you do work so you do writing, writing workshops like how many uh, workshops you think you do like a, in a year well, there's a certain time, there's like three or four times a year where I don't even work. Like, okay. it's some, so I align with planetary, um, planet, things that are going on in the planetary world. So there's something called Mercury. It's a planet called Mercury, right? right? But then there's something called Mercury retrograde. And right. during this time is when we should be really hibernating, um, resting, relaxing, and reviewing. I just started implementing this. Uh, last year, I started. I started just uh, let me test out one. You know, let me mm -hmm. let me test out. Cause what it was, I, I told you, I tested out. Yeah. So I tested out where I wasn't working, and I was like, Ooh, okay, this works. And then I was like, okay, let me. You know how most people do? Me. Mm -mm, I got to get on the grind. Let me work doing retrograde. Yeah. I said, oh no, I'm not doing that no more. It's so kick back. Yeah. So it's three or four times a year that I don't even work. So I, there, I have this window open of maybe like four times, well, yeah, about four times a year when I do my workshops, um, just so I can be aligned, because I, I believe in working with life, right, working with right. the planetary alignments, and I just see it's so much better when I rest, relax, and review during the times that we should be doing it. That way, like now, it's Mercury Retrograde done and over with, that's that's why I'm doing this video now, it's you know, right, yeah. in January. Yeah. I right. would have declined. You know what I mean? Yeah. I would have declined in February. I, I would have declined in December. But now I'm back. So everybody, everybody, most people yeah. know me maybe from May. I mean, from now to April, this is when I'm going to be most active. This right. is when I'll be doing technical stuff. This is when I'll be working. Right. So when April 19th hit. <laughs> it's time to shut it down again. It. <laughs> that's it. I'll yeah. be taking a break again. But rest relax and reviewing you know we've been so taught to just be on the go-go all the time team no sleep and all that Damn no <laughs> no <laughs> even though i'm the, even though i am team no sleep but it don't be on purpose <laughs> but, i know but like I, I was up late you 
know, don't get me wrong. I'm I I I'm up late, but I'm I just be on my own schedule, and that's yeah, a, that's right. a manifestation in itself that yeah. I can be on my own schedule. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I do I do the workshops about I keep it open for about four times a year. Um, but I have you know they can always register on Eventbrite or just you know go to my link tree and as a way to register for the workshops. I like the oh I love the in person. In person is always you know. That, that in person energy is always great, especially yeah. when you have multiple people. Um, because I told I have this portion of the workshop that I call Face Your Fears. Mm-hmm. Okay. And um so I have them write, right? They either if, if they don't have a book written already, I'll have them write during this time frame. If they already have something written, um, I'll tell them to finish it or work just work on it for I just give them a time frame, right? Mm-hmm. And then at the end of that I have the face your fears and then I'll be like, All right. Y'all come up here and read it. And they be everybody, everybody be like, what? What? I'm like, look, you're writers. You are writing for other people to read it, right? You got to face your fears and let other people listen. You got to be able to get that feedback um, before you put it out to the world. Uh, I, I, I love this. I, I'm glad we did this, though. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, I needed that mama energy on here. You know what I'm saying? So I appreciate that. Gratitude for having me. I feel, oh, that's what I was saying. It came back to me from Florida. When I was doing, okay, and I'm going to let you go. When I was doing my rap thing, uh, they had this uh, magazine in Florida at the time. And uh, they would put, like, the, the the hottest rappers from the city. I'm from Jacksonville. Duval. Oh, really? Okay, yeah. they got to give them their props, okay? Okay, but, yeah. Um, so they was putting people on the cover um you know for the people that was doing their thing in the city but they had never had a female on the cover and i was the first female on the cover of that magazine so i was excited about that and so today here i am in texas all these years later you telling me i'm the first female on your show energy so it's just like really exciting to always set you know the bar higher and just do something new and exciting so i appreciate you for even considering me for this that's dope yeah. That's dope. Oh, That's you. dope. Thank That's you. dope. For real. Oh,